when Steve Jobs announced the iPhone, no one was sitting around the next day saying, you know who's in trouble? The taxi industry, because someone's going to invent Uber. That took like two years for someone to figure out that application. So people are, it's going to be an incredible amount of innovation that it's going to be a lot of fun. Super exciting to see. Hi, I'm Tamara, and this is Telus Talks with Tamara Taggart. Today I'm speaking with Tobias Dangle. He's a digital media expert and president of Willow Tree, which is a TELUS international company. Tobias is passionate about using technology to create meaningful, human-centric experiences for people. His new book is called The Sound of the Future, and it dives into voice technology and its potential to change our everyday lives. I hope you enjoy the conversation. This podcast is brought to you by TELUS Smart Home Security. Secure, simplify, and easily monitor your home from anywhere using the Smart Home Security app. I use the app all the time because when I have all those groceries and I'm getting out of the car, I can just unlock the front door from my car. Saves me a lot of trouble. Visit telus.com slash smart home dash security to learn more about Canada's most trusted security provider. Hi, Tobias. It's great to see you. Tamara, it's awesome to be here. I'm excited to talk about this because it's, I mean, everybody's talking about AI right now. Everybody's talking about, you know, voice technology. And you have, uh, your book is called The Sound of the Future. And it's where you dive into voice technology and its potential. So, you know, what is the potential of voice technology? So I think we got super interested in this about eight or 10 years ago when Siri and Alexa took the world by storm and all of a sudden everyone had these voice interfaces, but then it kind of stalled. It didn't change the world that much. And we spent a lot of time thinking about why, why was that? Why did we want it? And then what happened? And the conclusion we came to is that we're using voice all wrong right now. And once we unleash it properly, uh, it will take the world by storm. And, And when I say we're using it all wrong, We're using it only half right. So the reason we all want to use voice is because it's so much faster. We can speak three times as fast as we can type. And so that's why, you know, we're all dictating into our devices all the time, dictating text messages, dictating emails. The problem is we can also read much faster than we can listen. So all these voice assistants like Siri and Alexa, they're all voice to voice. And so super easy to speak, super annoying to listen. And the example I always use is, You'd love to ask Siri or Alexa what movies are playing tonight. Super easy. You don't want to have Siri or Alexa give you five movies with three show times each. It's like movie phone um, from like 20 years ago. That's not helpful. What you want is your app to show you the movies that are playing. And then you look at it and say, all right, two tickets for Star Wars at eight. And then the app reacts. And so it's this multimodal interface where we speak. That is going to be the huge breakthrough. But we don't want to listen. Humans are bad at listening for all sorts of reasons, but one reason is it's slow. You are so right. And I've never had anyone say it to me like that because I, whenever I'm asking um, and I'm scared to say her name because I'm scared my phone is going to start talking back to me, it's constantly giving me stuff I don't want. I can't be bothered. And then I just don't even use it. So that's where the frustration comes in. I think a lot of people don't use it because it, it doesn't even work, it seem to work properly. So it becomes frustrating. It's super frustrating. And I think what we're going to, the, the analogy I use is Siri and Alexa are kind of like AOL, right? That was the, it was the first step. It was cool, but it was super frustrating, super slow. And the breakthrough is about to happen. I think the breakthrough is going to happen when every app that we use has a big mic button. And some of them already do, like Waze already does, Spotify already does. But you're just going to speak your commands to your app and your app's going to react. You're not going to be going through Siri or Alexa. You're just going to be speaking directly to the app or the, the website that you want to be engaging with. And then and then the system's going to do it. And it's so, to me, it's so backwards right now that the devices that they put in our homes are called smart speakers, but we don't want to listen to them other than for music. What they, they should be called smart mics, right? That's what it, everything's flipped wrong. That's why the adoption has, has taken so long. Aha. Uh-huh. So how fast is everything changing? Like, I mean, you, you said it was eight years ago for, is that how long ago we, we got 
what's her name? I don't want to say because I'm I'm serious. My phone is constantly listening the, to the me. The one from Amazon is about eight years. The one from Apple is about 12 years. And here's one of the most amazing stories. And we highlighted this in our book. Um, you know, when, when people are termin- terminally ill, they're often, they're often holding on for one more thing, um, like in a big event in their lives, et cetera. Steve Jobs, he, he, he wanted to see the launch of the Apple voice assistant, which I won't say either because our, all our listeners are going to have everything going off. He died the day after the launch. He was like holding on because he was such a huge believer in voice. And what's funny is that voice platform hasn't really evolved since his passing, but he actually, and we have a lot of interviews with people that were around him in the book, he actually believed in this multimodal voice experience, but then it hasn't really evolved you know, after, after he passed. But these, these things have been around for a while now. They've suffered because um, A, as I said, they haven't been, they've been conversational instead of multimodal. Um, and B, they just haven't been all that good at picking up at, at, you know, even if you don't, if you have an accent, it's really hard. If you don't have an accent, they still make a lot of mistakes. All that is going to get fixed by Gen AI, right? And that's why this revolu- this Gen AI revolution, that one of the way it's going to manifest in our lives is, is the voice explosion, right? Because if you think about, and you're seeing it now on some of these devices, if you say something, Gen AI is really good at pattern recognition. And so if you say something and it, it misinterprets a couple words, then you apply Gen AI to that sentence and say, what, what in all likelihood was Tamara really trying to say? It's going to be right 99.9% of the time, um, just based on the pattern recognition. And then it's going to create it. And you can see it right now on my phone when I dictate something. It often, like a second later, autocorrects everything, and they're using Gen AI to do that. And so the Gen AI is kind of the fuel to make conversation, conversational AI, as it's called, work. They need each other almost. They need each other, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so how, how does voice technology, I mean, will it change, you know, certain industries? Will it change how we do things in life? So... Our view is that it's the most important change in computing since the the iPhone, really, or or smartphones more generally, um, because every interface that humans have with a machine is is going to be voice first, where it can be, for all sorts of reasons. One is, as I said, speed. Think about how much time a day all of us spend typing, um, and all that's going to happen three times as fast with voice. It has implications for what an office looks like if everyone's speaking all the time. Um, but there's already examples of that. Radiologists do this today. They're dictating all the time. So if you go to a radiology office, they have like cocoons where people go into and they're just dictating. So they're not disturbing folks around them. Um, so, you know, productivity is a huge impact. Safety is another impact. So um, a lot of that, like Boeing 737 MAX crashes that happened, the pilots knew what they wanted the plane to do but they didn't know what buttons to hit and how to command it. And so voice first cockpits are not a mythical thing. Both the United States and the Russian air forces have voice first planes now, but for exactly this reason, um, any, anytime, uh, someone is using their hands and has to have their eyes on something. So obviously law enforcement is an example, but working as an assembly line in a warehouse, in a retail environment, um, you can keep doing what you're doing and just use your voice to tell the system what you want or to record something or to ask a question. Um, obviously, while driving, you know, Mercedes is a huge investor in this technology. So it's going to be everywhere, right? And, and it's one of those times in history, like the smartphone was, where um, you know, people ask me all the time, like, what, what's, what's the biggest breakthrough? And the answer is, I have no idea, right? If I, if I had that idea, I'd be doing something else because... You know, I always use the example when 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 Steve Jobs announced the iPhone, no one was sitting around the next day saying, you know, who's in trouble? The taxi industry, because someone's going to invent Uber. That took like two years for someone to figure out that application. So people are it's going to be an incredible amount of innovation that it's going to be a lot of fun. Super exciting to see. It It's so interesting. So as you were talking about, you know, people using their voice and just talking to their uh, 
I just immediately felt irritated because I already feel irritated when I'm walking everywhere and I see people talking into their phones like this. And I'm like, why? Nobody just talks on a phone anymore because it's not a phone. It's really not a phone. You know what I mean? Like we are walking around with these powerful computers in our hand. Everybody's talking on it. Everybody's got their, you know, their earphones in. And, and so, I mean, is that what we're talking about? We're going to be, are we going to go to the bank machine and talk to the bank machine? Or are we still going to? And they're going to have, they're going to have voice and eye. In that example, they're going to have voice and eye recognition. You're just going to walk up to it and say, you know, I need a hundred dollars. And instantly they will have both your voice and your eyes recognized and they'll just spit it out. I mean, that's, that's where we're, yeah. Really? Okay. So what about this is fascinating. And also it scares me because I heard somebody say that, you know, when you get these prank phone calls, right. Or you get these phone calls that are these robo calls or whatever, when you pick up the phone there, there's the potential that AI is recording your voice every time you go, hello, 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 because they want to make your voice because they can use your voice. I mean, is that hundred percent, right? So there's, you know, it's always a arms race between the people trying to commit fraud and the people trying to prevent fraud. So, you know, for my bank, I voice authenticate right now. They ask me to say a certain phrase and I say it and they, they know who I am. Now that is possible to spoof through third party software, but you can also at this point use software to tell that it's been spoofed because it's never exact and there's and there's kind of telltale signals but you know that's again another arms race like how much can you tell how much you can't but it's everything is going to be two factor i mean people are always asking me like how do you prevent fraud i i I always say two factor is everything right because yes it's possible to spoof your voice yes it might be possible to somehow uh take an image of your eyes and spoof you know your eyes but doing both at once, really, really hard. And then if you add a layer, like is Tamara calling from the phone number that she usually calls from and you start adding three levels, then that that's that's the trick to everything is multiple levels of security because because compromising multiple levels at once gets really much more difficult. So you talked about like radiologists, how they dictate, right? Is, is that what you mean? Like they're dictating or no, this is, you're talking about something. Exactly. They're dict- They're looking at an image and instead of typing it, they're just saying it. And I mean, doctors have dictated forever because, you know, it's such an expense. Time is so expensive for them. So it's always made sense. But in the past, it was a typist somewhere translating it. Now it's just automatic real time. Holy moly. So... When we talk about, you know, um, the potential for good, let's just talk about some good here. How does, how does, you know, what does the future for voice technology look like when it comes to um, helping people who really need it? Yeah. So accessibility is a a huge use case uh, for voice. One example is our, our company produced this app called Vocal, which is a free app because one of our um, team members, his girlfriend, super active marathon runner, um, got ill um, with GBS and then she was in a hospital and, the, and she could only move her eyes, right? And if you're um, in a hospital doing that, the nurses come up and they have a giant sign of every letter of the alphabet and they point at a letter and then you move your eyes up or down, which is a very, very difficult way to communicate. So we built an app using eye tracking um, so that you could just look at the letter and rest on it and then it would um, then it would communicate. The problem with that is you're still kind of generating everything from scratch every time. And then after Gen AI came out last year, like we said, hey, we can flip this on its head. We can actually have the app listen to a caregiver in the room who might say, hey, are you cold right now? And then the app interprets it. And then the person responding can just look at either yes or no versus having to spell everything out. And it and it and the voice technology really turns us into a conversation. And, and I mean, we have incredible letters from um, folks who suffer, for example, from ALS, who said this has been absolutely life-changing, that they can almost have real-time conversations now again. Um, and so that's one example in terms of accessibility. Um, there's lots of, um, you know, I, another really interesting thing for me is helping all, you know, over a billion people on the planet 
who are illiterate or functionally illiterate, helping them communicate because now in a voice first world, you don't need to be write or type anymore. You can just talk and you can now become part of the digital ecosystem in the digital world instantly overnight. Um, the translation aspects are almost real time translation so that people can have conversations, which again is, you know, take, take India, which has, I think, 4,000 plus languages. Uh, many of those languages that only have 10,000 or fewer speakers, it's now become efficient enough that those languages can be translated and those people can actually be part of the larger world around them. So, I mean, it is, it's amazing what this is going to do in terms of understanding between people, in terms of um, giving people access. Uh, one of my favorite stories is a, um, a cane for um, the visually impaired that um, talks to them, um, recognizes the world around them and kind of speaks to them in terms of like, there's a curb ahead or watch out, there's a car coming. Um, so anyway, it's, it's an exciting time. So see that those are things I would never think that voice technology could do. It seems so Jetsons, right? It's George Jetson. It's actually, it's beyond George Jetson. It's, I mean, I'm still waiting for the car in the briefcase, but it's, you know, here we are and it's, it's going to change a lot of lives. Do you think it will be accessible for everybody? Like, are these going to be expensive programs? Will they be built into our apps? Will they be like, what does that look like? I think they're going to be built into our apps. I think the, the heavy lifting on the expense side has already been done um, in all kinds of different ways. But one is the large Gen AI LLM models. And now it's basically applying all that investment to use cases. And so I think it's just going to be built in. Someone asked me recently, how are we going to know that voice is everywhere? I'm, I said, you're going to pick up every app you own and it's going to have a giant mic button. And it's the most natural thing in the world is going to be to pick up your banking app and ask it to transfer money to your kid or whatever it is. It feels so unsafe. And I guess, I mean, it just feels so unsafe because there's so much cyber crime, right? And we hear about people being, you know, money disappearing from their bank account or whatever. And I know that, I mean, we could talk for hours and hours about, you know, security. Um, there's, you know, and, and for a lot of us who are not in the same business that you're in, it's super confusing for the, you know, the general consumer, right? So we think about things like, oh, we have to go to the store and we have to do a self-checkout. I find that super irritating. Do you think things like that will change where we're not having to, to do all of, you know, like, I mean, most people can't scan their own stuff and we need a person anyways, because there's always a problem. Is, are those types of everyday experiences, like going to a restaurant, going to the grocery store, do you see voice working in those everyday interactions also? Yeah. I mean, restaurants are a good example where um, already just this year, McDonald's, Wendy's, um, and a few others have announced voice first experiences. And so, you know, I think the natural thing is if you're going, especially to a fast food kind of place, you're going to just open the app up in real time, say, Hey, I need two cheeseburgers to two like Cokes, whatever it is. And it's going to show you what you ordered in the app and you're going to say yes. And then five minutes later, you're going to show up and it's going to be ready for you. Um, if you think about it, right, a lot of employees, their only job is to translate human conversation into a device, right? Like if you're at a fast food place, the person behind the counter, Tim Hortons, their only job is to interpret what Tamara said and type it into a machine. And that job doesn't need to exist anymore because that's going to happen in real time on its own. Um, but even when I visit my doctor, right, my doctor, she's like the whole time I'm talking to her, she's typing to a computer, like all the notes on what I'm saying, which I find super annoying. Um, doesn't feel like she's really paying attention to me. Um, but again, that's a, an incredible waste of time. Why do we have someone as highly paid as a doctor basically translating what I'm saying into a computer? Like the computer should be doing that on its own and it will be here in very short order. Oh mm, my gosh. Okay. So obviously I have a lot more questions for you, but before we do that, we like to thank our guests for being here. So tell us, um, always commits by, uh, asking our, our guests to choose, um, a Canadian nonprofit that we can, uh, give a gift to on your behalf. And you chose UNICEF Canada. Uh, thank you for choosing them. So we will give them, um, a donation in your name to thank you for 
being here. So thank you, Tobias, for choosing them. Yes, UNICEF Canada. So, you know, you talk, we, we talked, to, we touched a little bit on health and we touched, can you just mention that app that you uh, said again, that you have? Vocable. Vocable. Okay. V-O-C-A-B-L-E, Vocable. Yeah. Okay. So um, my son uh, and many kids, uh, many adults are nonverbal. And so there are different programs they could, because they, you know, they, so someone like my son can't use his voice or maybe he can one day because he, you know, he can talk, but it's very hard to understand him. So maybe there will be an app that can help with that. I don't know. But right now he uses one called touch chat. And so he has all these words in there and he can go and type out the words and then it will talk for him. It'll say the sentence, what he wants. Is that, is, do you think that technology will also change with, with all this new stuff that's available now? Cause the one, I got to say the one he's using seems kind of, I don't want to say archaic because it's a pretty incredible app, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, I think these are going to all get changed completely by this technology, gen AI, et cetera, because it's going to be so much better at predicting what he will likely say. And I do think he'll be able to speak in his own voice and it'll be translated into, um, you know, a, a kind of more understandable version. The, um, you know, there's the, the research on, on this is incredible. In the book, we, we have a whole section on this and we talk to um, some of the top researchers, particularly a, a doctor at, the, at Vanderbilt, and they're, they're diagnosing, especially cognitive decline, just with voice. People speak certain things, they get asked certain questions, and then the system can diagnose, all right, this person may have on early onset Parkinson's or whatever it is, um, based on how they're responding. So it's, it's, it's a really interesting and exciting time in that specific field around healthcare and voice. Wow. Okay. So you did mention your, your, your company is called Willow Tree. So is, is that what you do there? Do you do, you develop apps? You. Yeah. So we started developing apps and we, you know, do anything digital now websites and help companies with their digital strategy, et cetera. But we got really interested. We always get asked what's next, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And, 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 and you know, the world's, everyone, the consensus is wrong more than it's right on what's next, right? If you went to CES in Vegas, the big consumer electronics show in like 2012, 2013, you would have been told the big next thing is 3D television. We're all going to have 3D TV. None of us have 3D TVs. And then, you know, for the last four or five years, it's all been around spatial computing or the metaverse. Um, None of us really have any kind of we don't spend a lot of time in the metaverse, um, most of us. Most of us don't even know what it is. Most of us don't know what it is. It's very confusing, and we're not going to sit around most of our days with goggles on. But we became convinced three, four years ago that voice was the next big thing. And, and, and the reason is when you think about like what makes a technology a big thing is it has to solve a human need. And voice is so much more efficient. It creates safety. It does things we can't normally do. It's the same as the iPhone, right? It solved the human need of having these computers, as as you mentioned, in our pocket all the time, always on, always with us, highly efficient, way more efficient than opening a laptop up every time we wanted to do something. So um, voice is one of the few technologies that creates so much human efficiency and value. and that's why we, it, it's, 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 and I think when you really start studying, it becomes so obvious. You're like, why? This should be going even faster. And it and we're about to get there. So when you started off in, in this business, um, I, I, I mean, I have a note here that it was in the, you know, I guess the mid nineties, which seems like it was yesterday, but we both know it wasn't. Um, could you ever could you ever have imagined that this is where we would be? Um, in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. So I was at AOL in the late 90s, and AOL was you know, very cutting edge at the time, and then the internet took over and AOL wasn't. But even then, we were, we had, we were playing with voice technology, um, and we were really trying to make it work, but it just wasn't good enough. And I think most of the last, when it, there's so many people that have spent so much time on voice in the last 20 years 
trying to make it better and better and better. And, and all of those, when, 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 when OpenAI launched ChatGPT last year, those of us that were close to it were immediately convinced that this was that special moment, just like, you know, they call it the iPhone moment when Steve Jobs launched the iPhone and then opened it up to developers um, or the internet moment in kind of the late 90s. We feel like it's a moment like that because usually what happens is there's like two or three or four different technologies that converge and all of a sudden by converging them, something big happens and, and that's kind of where we are right now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we've been talking a lot about some really exciting, you know, potential and a lot of good. And so I'm going to assume that, uh, like all things, it can be used for good, but it could probably also be used for evil. Um, So could you maybe touch on what some of those things could look like with voice technology? Yeah. So I think the potential for fraud is extraordinary and it's not i mean there is a potential that someone you know simulates your voice tamara and then tries to log into your bank account um that's kind of that possible but harder to do especially with two or three factor authentication i think the real risk is um is is vis-a-vis people who are just not conscious of how powerful this technology is so an example that's already being used is Anyone that's public, whose voice is out in the public, which is yours and mine by definition, just by being on this podcast, if this were the only thing we'd ever done, um, our voices can be simulated and someone can use that to create an avatar of us and, for example, call our parents and tell our parents that we are in a dire situation and have a conversation with them and try to get them to wire us money, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the kinds of things that are very difficult to stop. And, you know, the, the whole, you know, it's going to, it's going to play a role in politics with, was this recording real? Was this not real? Um, they're going to be avatars that can simulate what politicians, you know, the, the trust in, 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 in audio or video recordings is going to erode quite quickly because it's so easy to, to fake them going forward. Right. And, and some of that isn't good. Like, you know, I think, um, in the Tom Cruise movie, um, Val Kilmer's voice was was completely fake. He's lost his voice from cancer, and they took recordings from the original Top Gun, and they used that to simulate his voice. Now, so that's a good use and an interesting use and an artistic use of this technology, but it could be used for very nefarious things as well. Mm-hmm. Well, and then we have social media on top of it, right? So we have a way for it to take off within seconds, really. Anything can. Yes. And you could see like governments that are at odds with each other, like in the current environment, the Russian government, the Iranian government creating a a fake video of, you know, President Biden as an example, and they getting catching on like wildfire in those areas. So it's it's a dangerous time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So um, just as we're wrapping up, let's just talk for uh, a few minutes about the sound of the future. Who who's this book for to be us? Like, is it for um, I mean, obviously, it's for everybody. But if somebody's listening and they're like, oh, I don't really understand all this sort of stuff. And this seems like it's way above my head. Like, what would this book offer them? Yeah. So I think we had a couple of different audiences in mind. One was, um, and and it was really written to not be technical. Um, It was written to inspire people around what the potential of voice is and and what some of the risks are, but also the very basics of how it works, just so they understand. So obviously anyone at any company, whether they're the sole proprietor or at a large company, I think voice is going to be a really, really big deal. And this applies to them pretty heavily. Um, I think anyone looking for new business ideas, um, it's a very inspirational read because there's, whenever there's a big technology shift like this, all of a sudden, all kinds of new businesses emerge and every, every industry is going to be disrupted by this. And there are going to be people who, who, who embrace the new technology and those who don't and those who embrace it um, are going to do usually much better than those who don't. Um, but it's also meant to be just general interest as people who are, who are, you know, observers of this, trying to figure out what it's all about and, 
you know, followers of trends and general interest. I think all those are categories that we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. Mm. I love it. So the book is called The Sound of the Future. Uh, Your company is Willow Tree, which is a TELUS international company. And I just want to mention that app again, the Vocable app. I'm going to look it up as soon as we're done here because that is, uh, it's fascinating. I can't thank you enough for this, Tobias. It's a really, you helped, you helped um, simplify things in a very, in a very good way that, uh, doesn't make me feel as scared, (laughs) if that makes sense, because it is, it's a lot to take in with AI coming at us and, uh, you know, all the technology is changing and, you know, we have a lot of power in our hands. We do that. Yeah. Well, Tamara, it's been great, great talking to you. Well, really good talking to you. Thank you. And you are available. uh, You can be found on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm the only Tobias Dengel on LinkedIn. So it's easy to hunt me down. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Thanks so much for your time. All right. Thank you, Tamara. Thanks for listening to another episode of TELUS Talks with Tamara Taggart. Be sure to subscribe so you can join us every Tuesday for another conversation. You can also check out our website, telus.com slash podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at TELUS Talks.